Let me start by quoting the commander of the UN force in Rwanda, Lieutenant Colonel Romeo Daler, in his hunting account of the Rwandan genocide, and I quote, the worst eyes that haunt me are the eyes of those people who were totally bewildered. They're looking at me with my blue beret and they're saying, what in the hell happened? We are moving toward peace. You were there as a guarantor. How come I'm dying here? Those eyes dominated and they're absolutely right. How come my mission failed? Mr. President, 21 years have passed since the Rwanda genocide, but the mission of protecting civilians remains a pressing challenge and a primary responsibility of the international community. Over the past decade, the number of people in need of international humanitarian assistance has tripled. The overwhelming majority of these people, those people, are civilians affected by armed conflict and other stressing emergencies. Today, men and women in numerous places around the world are at risk. Civilians have become pawns in a game which state and non-state actors use them to gain political leverage. Attacks directed at civilians have become depressingly routine and we receive daily reports of new atrocities which shake the human conscience. Mr. President, nowhere in the world is a situation more heartbreaking than in Syria. Assad murderous regime has been attacking and killing civilians by the hundreds of thousands. Despite the fact that the Security Council has adopted numerous resolutions demanding that the Syrian government allow free access for UN humanitarian aid, attempts to deliver cross-border and cross-line humanitarian aid is being impeded because of the challenging security and operational environment. In the meantime, people continue to suffer. We have all witnessed the struggle of the people of the Syrian town of Madaya, where 42,000 people have been taken hostage by Assad and his Hezbollah allies. The town and its people are under siege, surrounded by barbed wire, landmines, and snipers. Left without basic, basic access to food, men, women, and children have been dying on a daily basis due to starvation and the harsh winter weather. They found themselves resorting to eating household pets and making soup of grass. UNICEF representative to Syria described the situation on the ground and I quote, the starvation here is no act of God, not the result of drought or flooding or crop failure. This famine is man-made. The use, let me state the obvious, the use of starvation as a weapon of war is deplorable and is a war crime. The dire situation in, in Madaya is an example that has captured public attention, but it is estimated that this is only tenth of the number of those stranded in besieged or hard to reach areas as conditions grow steadily worse. Mr. President, Hezbollah, the, enforces, the enforcer of Iranian and Syrian orders, the recruiter of children to fight Syria, is the prime organization terrorizing the people of Madaya. This should not come as a surprise. Terrorism, terrorizing, terrorizing civilian population is part of Hezbollah modus operandi. This is what they do. Israel has warned time and time again that letting Hezbollah actions go unchecked will only result in more death, pain, and suffering. Over the course of the years, Hezbollah has been indiscriminately firing rockets toward heavily populated areas in Israel while using the people of southern Lebanon as human shields. One example is the southern Lebanese village Muhayabib, where Hezbollah has moved military infrastructure into the village and the villages in the surrounding area. Those villages where innocent civilians go about their daily lives have been transformed to military bases. Who speaks for these people? Who protects these people from Hezbollah? According to recent report, the village, consisting of 90 houses in total, contains no less than nine armed depots, five rocket launching sites, four infantry positions, three underground tunnels, three anti-tank positions, and a command post. Let me state the obvious again, Mr. President. Deliberately putting the lives of innocent civilians in harm's way is a war crime. Mr. President, as a new member of the Security Council, I would like to inform you that unfortunately, the threat to the lives of both Lebanese and Israeli civilians is rarely, if ever, mentioned in this hall. 
It is the responsibility of the Security Council to identify rising threats and to prevent situations such as these from escalating. The Security Council should send a clear message to Hezbollah, as well as to Lebanon, that this cannot be tolerated. Mr. President, the tactic of taking civilians' population hostage for political and military advantage has steadily become a primary method of waging war by state and non-state actors. Protecting civilians under these circumstances while holding non-state actors to their obligation under international humanitarian law is our biggest collective challenge. Reviewing the high-level independent panel on UN peace operation, the HIPO report, we are encouraged that the report recognizes that in cases of imminent threat, the UN must rise to the challenge of protecting civilians. Furthermore, recognizing the linkage between a wider political approach and the UN responsibility toward civilians will enable a realistic mandate with possibility of implementation and plan of action. Before concluding, I would like to pay tribute to the brave men and women peacekeepers which lost their lives, who lost their lives while serving in the most dangerous places on the globe. And to those who continue to serve, let me reiterate Israel's appreciation for their work, that they have, uh, they have a life-changing impact on millions of people that are in dire need of protection. Mr. President, next week, the General Assembly will mark the International Day of Commemoration in memory of the victims of the Holocaust. We know all too well the horror that humankind is capable of. Promises have been made, but yet the international community failed at too many junctures. We must fulfill what we promised 70 years ago, never again. We must not allow dictators and terrorist organizations to dictate the rules of the game. Too many lives are at stake. This is the message the Council should send today. Thank you, Mr. President.